We are here with Yata and a bunch of cool people. Let me show you here. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? And we are on our way to Munich from Samaris from CFC. Uh, Yata, I think you don't need introduction, but uh, for the builders out there, you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. My name is Yata, chairman of the Animal Brands. We've got over 540 investments in Web3, gaming, culture, entertainment, L1, L2s, uh, and including proud investors in Metamask. <laughs> so yes. Excellent. No, we were literally like discussing different things and then we said, okay, AI agents, we need to actually like speak and uh, highlight a little bit what's happening. But uh, what, what what's your take on agents, frameworks? You know, Eliza is popping up, V2 is coming, we're super excited. Um, so much, so much. I don't know where to start, but let me start for you. Well, I think the AI agents that are currently um, most popular, um, a lot of them are kind of like Wizard of Oz. Right? So, mm, Wizard of Oz, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so it's kind of a hybrid. But it's getting there, and a lot is focused on investment. But the future of AI agents, actually, to me, is pretty, really powerful because uh, in, in Web3, AI agents actually have the ability to generate digital money. So, for instance, last year, in 24, $15 billion in airdrops was given away. But these $15 billion in airdrops were actually protocols. And what's a protocol? What's the difference between a protocol giving you a token and a AI giving you a token? It's actually kind of the same. And so we're seeing now a state where actually people are working for AI agents. And they're actually doing work for them. So we always used to think of AI as a way where we use the AI to benefit us. But actually now, the AI is using us in a way because they're basically paying us additional currency. So that's kind of interesting. That's interesting. But, so that's the first one. The second one is that we're particularly excited outside of the agentic investment stuff or on gaming. Um, or now, gaming agents. If you took a look at PUBG Ally, not if you've seen this, but PUBG Ally basically is the first sort of uh, way in which someone can play with a player that plays with you just like a human. And actually, that's kind of a carrying business. So that actually shows the beginning of the power that generative AI can have, not only in like speaking and talking, but actually in action and creating sort of friendships and all that kind of stuff. And to go on top of that, right? Um, and I guess we got to put our seatbelt on. Oh, yeah, let's put our seatbelts. This is why we're doing those random interviews. I'm excited about to hear more like yeah. gaming agents would be a big thing, especially for like a uh, batch. Like uh, batch, batch transactions, automatic signings. Right. And also, I think it's one of the reasons why Web2 gaming AI is primitive. Because actually, gaming NPCs is actually the type of AI that most people engage with. Oh, yeah. Much more than open, um, with open AI as ChatGPT. We use ChatGPT in our course, Yes. But everyone, 3.4 billion people play games, always engage <laughs> with some kind of silly NPC that talks to you, the dumb AI. Now, the reason why the AI is better in many cases is because it costs money. The business model isn't tied to the end. Of course, uh, yes. Or tokens come in. Yes. If I want to engage with you, how do I pay you? Digital currency, also, I'll engage with you because maybe I can make money from you or I can have value. Yes. Right? And what's really exciting is that that type of gaming AI that you can train and track with can move to other games. Uh, and the identity yes. around that will change. And I think the trigger, point, point, the trigger point for that that I'm very excited about will be when GTA 6 comes out. Uh, because you know, our industry is very bibitic driven. You know, if you remember when Facebook renamed itself to Meta, Everything Metaverse was doing well, regardless yes. of whether it was yes. good, right? And then now it's AI, yes. you know, yes. you know, because of chat GPT, all the same. Yes. But actually, when the gaming cycle comes, GTA 6, everyone will talk about of gaming and yes. that stuff. The AI in GTA 6, most people don't know, take two uh, uh, basically patents and some interesting gaming AI patents. Yes. Right? So you're going to see some very creative uh, AI elements uh, yes. coming in GTA 6, which will be probably the most successful. Yes in a very long time. Uh, and again, the meta will come from that. That's super cool. But how we kind of ensure the cross, like basically cross-chain um, uh, adaptability between uh, AI agents? Because I feel here already now, there are agents basically building an ecosystem, their own ecosystem between specific chain. So how we can actually ensure or like, how, uh, because I, I'm assuming agents will be cross-chain, yes. will be literally like on different ways, right? But yeah. how we can ensure that, right? Well, first of all, you know, this is a fascinating thing. The, what it shows is, is incentive. Right? Yeah. It's not technology per se. Yeah. So it's kind of like, why do we interact cross-chain? Because there's a token to make here. There's a value here. It's capitalist. Yes. And we're going to see this age where AI will be capitalist. Too. In fact, AI is already kind of capitalist. And so the AI will do things to benefit itself yes. in a capitalist manner in which it's programmed to do, and it will do so, and it will go cross-chain for that benefit. And the owner of the AI, if that is the case, and by the way, I think this will be a very fascinating future where, you know, just like we see with Doge, we're going to have people basically launching AIs and throwing away the keys. Right? And, and that's actually where things yes. like decentralized storage becomes really more important because yes. where you get that information in perpetuity, that basically that's becomes right, a power it. source. But when you basically get to yes. more decentralization, you're going to get AI yes. that is truly independent. It's very interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting as well. But, yeah. but anyway, my point on this is that even the people who own the AI, they are also driven by a capitalist incentive. And the capitalist incentive will be where can I get the most? 
Um, you know, if you look at things like the Pengu airdrop, it's an Ethereum ecosystem, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they actually dropped, Very. you know, and, and launched on Solana. Why? Because Solana has more liquidity and it was better for everyone. And yes. nobody is complaining, even on yes. Ethereum. Why did you not launch yes. it on Abstract? Why did you not launch it on No, because the value was generated on Solana yes. to benefit everyone, including you. Yes. Right? So I think I think we'll see that. So again, I think that the capitalist incentive will ensure cross-chain interoperability yes. because that's where most of the value will be driven. Yes. Yeah, there is strong, every ecosystem has kind of like a strong and weaknesses, especially like for the builders out there. Yeah. I think having a frameworks that you can actually build and having the integration, I think even for an agent, when you have an agent that actually interact with other agents, right now we don't really have... Uh, well, this is crazy. This is what we don't. But they, again, they're going to build it because... Uh, and if the self-generated stuff is fascinating too, but they're going to build it because they're going to want to transact with each other and yeah. so-called cool business. Now, uh, this is where I think token trading is going to go and listing. You already see the centralized exchanges. Most of the trading is market makers and bots. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So yeah. in a way, that's already, it's not AI, yes, but it's essentially it's already machine oriented. Yes. Now imagine what happens in DeFi and yeah. Nexus yeah. when AI start trading and then people are not just going to copy trade and follow. They're going to do their own things. And then when you have independent AI, they're going to end up actually negotiating with other AI and they're going to do what we're seeing. So we're going to see much more velocity, much more volume, which also means more yes. fees, more fees, more actions, mm-hmm. and generally it's going to benefit the owners of the LBS yes. too. So, yes. so again, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a very powerful thing. Yeah. And any other government estimate increase of tourism? Yes. Tourism? Yeah, because people are going to have more and more time. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I think, I think there's going to be that. Um, I also think, uh, and to your point, uh, outside of you know, more creative freedom, so outside of tourism, I think we're going to be able to engage more creative time because yes. AI can do more work. Yes. Yes. But I think in the nature of just one thing, one thought, and especially for MetaMask, yes, yes, yes. is that I actually think the massive onboarding mechanism isn't going to be a classic wallet. Yes. It's going to be a prompt. So you talk to the future wallet, yeah. and I don't need to know anything. Yeah. And I just say, hey, you know, it becomes almost like your private yes. curve. Yeah. And they set everything up for yeah. you. But if you can solve the security, yes. just, really that's how you onboard people. Yeah, 100%. Because, because it's so difficult. Yeah. Uh, but actually, the AI is able to do that. And, and to me, that's how you onboard people. Say, I should open a wallet. Oh, I can do this. Yes. And, you know, we we'll have this issue around security keys. Well, facial recognition, oh, yes. fingerprints, stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, I can store that. Yes. You know, in a cryptographic, zero knowledge. Yes. Way, yes. Uh, which actually you could. Of course. Yeah. Then you no longer have to worry about saving and remembering things like that. So I see really a really fascinating future where the onboarding will come yes. because the QX of the yes. Yes. It's going to be yeah, so I, I actually started to see some um, uh, some frames and UX uh, mockups in crypto Twitter being viral mm-hmm. on AI agents integrating in like wallet interfaces. Yes, that's what actually super interesting. Yeah, I just want to show everybody the the viewers here. It's exactly. like, well, it's the sun is going down. Yeah, yeah. Before. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we're going down. Go, 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 go. Yeah, literally going down. No, but this is uh, this is super interesting. What other verticals of agents are you excited about apart like gaming? Uh, oh, education. We're a huge problem. So they want to do stuff with open campus, uh, but you know, when tiny type is doing stuff like yeah, personalized tutoring, you know, I mean just think about the classroom, one class one, one teacher, 20, 30 kids, if you're in Africa, 50, 100 kids, whatever, right? You basically have a phone, they can personalize everything towards you. And again, token economies become fascinating around that too. It's not just using it so cool for free, someone has to pay for it. Uh, you can even do donation models. Okay. Like, you know, hey, I want to sponsor them. It's fine, right? like, yeah. You don't have to go wire some money somewhere who's controlling it. You feed the AI straight, right? You know, there's, there's so many things you can do that's really fascinating. And, you know, there's almost a billion people in the world who don't have literacy, and, and you know, but they might have access to a phone, right? Yes. And so that to me is fascinating. And they can personalize themselves towards your type. Yes. And we've seen, for instance, in studies that people have different learning profiles. The reason why one teacher can't teach all the kids the same way is because the teacher might be visual. But the, the but the kid might be more you know um, sort of you know more sort of verbal right yes and so there's a mismatch and you notice that in classrooms they have these curves right you know there's a top percent or whatever but often it's not because there's smarter or less smarter kids it's just that this teacher is more compatible with that kid but it's not possible because you have a human limit right? yes you know millions of teachers actually in America alone you know probably tens of millions of teachers around the world but how many kids are learning yeah you know? yeah and right now it's all about AI learning uh, yes but AI like, is learning but here AI can teach. Uh, and, and I think there's two ways also. Two ways, exactly. And they can personalize as well. And also, you'll have subject matter experts as well. So, you won't be learning from one AI teacher. You'll yes. learn many. And you can spread the rest around. So, very you know, for open campus, that's a big, big focus area. Tiny Tap is already now having tools from teachers to create learning content on the fly. So, as a teacher, it's hard for you to make content. Yes. I don't know tools, I don't know how to program, but I know how to make content that might be appealing for the kids. In fact, I would argue that teachers are the biggest content creators or one of the of course. largest content creators yes. as well. They just individualize and you know, try different teachers yes. with AI. It's going to Imagine a classroom where 
they are full 20 kids and they actually have the time to basically go and um, make customized content for the same curriculum for five or six cohorts in the classroom. You can't do that yes, at the time, yes. but you can do it in machines, yes. right? And then things like grading the homework. Oh, yeah. Why does a teacher know oh, yes. to do that, right? Yes, Seriously, yes, right? Yes. still do it. Of course. Again, AI can do that. Yes. It frees them up to focus on the more important things. So, yes. so, so education is a big area. Education is a big area. Very, very excited. Yes. Yeah, and and uh, I know that we are almost landing, guys, but uh, I want to ask you more high level, like uh, what are kind of the things that you're excited about I'm, you know, I think DeFi is, is coming back. Sure. We already see it coming back, but what are kind of the other things that you are still excited about? Outside of gaming, we think that is a onboarding tool. That's a big one, right? Um, and as I said, you know, things like um, GTA 6 is going to, I think, create massive thematic around it as well. Yeah. And the high quality games that are already coming out. But the other thing we're really, really uh, feel is important is reputation. Oh, reputation so, based systems. Reputation based systems. You know, that's what we're doing with Pokerverse, but there's many other things that help create better reputation on chain. Yes. Stop civil attacks. Not just proof of human, we think AI agents yes. have reputation too. Yes. Right? But with that proof of your identity, I can now do business with you. Like in real life, if you have a good reputation, yes. you can do business with you. If you're a stranger, I don't know. If you have bad reputation, I don't do business with you. That's one of the problems we have in Web3 is that we deal with anonymity, and that's okay, but you still need to have reputation. But it, that's yeah. that's the point. But usability, that sometimes everything more on chain is also killing the usability side. I would but, like. But I think if you. Oh, careful. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. There you are. But I think that. If the benefit of reputation is strong enough, usability doesn't matter. For instance, mm-hmm. is it use how usable is it to open a bank account? Ask yourself this question. It's complete nonsense. Yeah. And still we do it. You know yeah. the issue. I agree. Right. Yeah. Because the benefit of having a bank account is big enough. So we don't care about that usability. We don't have to make it more so user friendly. We just have to make sure the benefit outweighs the right? And if your reputation is good enough, I will do that because there's a benefit. Maybe more airdrops. Of course. Yeah. But actually, the big holy grail of reputation is unsecured credit. Uh-huh. Unsecured credit is what yes. basically is driving most of the world, yes. but it doesn't exist in Web3 because I can't trust you. So everything's over-collateralized, actually. Yes. So the trust comes from our collateral. Yes. But if you have reputation, we think that's Decision the higher systems, yes. And it opens up a lot of opportunity. And then so we can start giving, you know, I can, I can actually give you a loan on tokens to enter the game because I know that you have reputation. In yes. I know that you want to hurt your reputation for a future airdrop or future mechanism. So you are good for it. You know, it's like, in, in, by the second employment, if I'm actually joining a company for the first time, it's all reputation. Of course. Right. Yes, yes, yes. You no, know, yes. I, I don't put the lateral. Agree. Agree. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Agree. Yeah. And so the whole world works around that, and I think that's the I think that's the missing piece in Web three that really explodes it into the um, sort of so sort of yeah. hundreds of trillions of dollars type of system. Yes, and the question is really like a more reputational system will also bring a inefficiency, inefficiency, right? But at the same time, we need to make sure that uh, yeah. Usability is also key, right? That's right. Yeah. So the soul bound reputation, right? Soul bound. So yeah, so most of the idea is a soul bound NFT, uh, cross chain, omni chain. And we're starting with our own portfolio. They attest reputation. But then, of course, everyone else can borrow the reputation. And the beautiful thing is that, you know, with zero knowledge, I don't have to reveal your identity, of course, but I can attest that reputation to a new wallet. So you still have your anonymity. Yes. But you can attest to benefits yes. of reputation. Also, if you do something bad, it will come back. So I think reputation only works if you can also you can gain it, but also lose it. And I think a lot of systems haven't thought about it that way because you know it's always plus plus plus. But actually, you know, I think it's only valuable if you can lose it, just like money. Yes, so many great insights. Any other questions here? Oh, well, we're good to go. And uh, about uh, zk using zk for digital identity and yes. reputation. Yeah. My wallet. I'm one of the fifty people in the world who have a in a Etherscan tag top digit. Yeah. And but also I have a uh, tag uh Ukrainian donor. Mm. Because I've been one of the first who started <laughs> the donation. Yes. But now I'm not welcome in some countries because in my Twitter I have my wallet. Yes. So I'd better use ZK to you know hide myself. So I think for ZK, the nice thing is that you choose to show what part of your reputation you want to present, right? Um but it could also be, and so to me, this is the construction of freedom. You have the freedom not to reveal, but I also have the freedom to refuse you if you don't reveal, right? Of and I think this is where sometimes people sometimes have difficulty with freedom because it's like my freedom is more than your freedom. Not true, right? Yeah, yeah. It's more like, so you can always preserve your anonymity because you don't want to show who you are, but you may not be allowed to do something, but that's okay too mm-hmm. because you both have the freedom to deny or allow what you like. Um, and, and, but, but I think this is the power because you can, it's not like today, if you do a CV, you have to show everything. And then, you know, like, for instance, today, some people in jobs are even saying, I need to look at your social media for your job. Of course. But that's kind of not okay either, right? Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, guys, I, we arrived. Uh, we're really on time. Thank you so much, Yat. And uh, thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, there you are. There you are. There you are. There you are. See you guys next time. Cheers, 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 cheers.